Era debate where we debunk, debate, and discover all things to us. Yes, my name is Morale O'Kane. Okay, it's the Hair Debate. We are talking about disorders today. HQPD, also known as Hair Quality Personality Disorders. Okay, but now my panel can, I'm sure, define it in several different ways as well. So let me introduce them to you. They are very, look at you, just beautiful. Uh, you know. <laughs> I'm not saying, how are you doing, lovely? I'm Today, how are you? I am doing great, thank you. Now, Amanda, I, you know, and my panel has been with me, oh my God, this season. And so I know you guys are aware of who they are, but she is a family and marriage um, therapist. Yes, I am. And you are, you just around the town, just therapeutic everyone here. Just, no, no. Helping all the people. Just helping all the people. I love that. I love that. Dr. Donna Ario. Whoa. Woo. Oh, that's <laughs> Y'all, y'all don't even understand. All my syllables are there. And she <laughs> wants to hear them all. Every single one. <laughs> I absolutely love it. How are you doing, beautiful? I'm doing wonderfully. Do do Dr. Mm -hmm. Donna, okay, you have your doctorate in sexuality. Yes. Okay, you doing some things, I tell you. Okay. A new addition as well, a new credential. Yes, my uh, cer my certified sex therapist credential. Ah, uh -huh, you yes. don't it. You don't it. You, so, you know the work hasn't changed, but apparently the prices not. are supposed to. <laughs> no, 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 for real, for real. And then this beautiful right here, Miss Amy Gaskin. How are you doing, beautiful? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. Oh my God, I'm, I'm gonna tell you I love your hair. I love your hair. I appreciate that. It's my crown. <laughs> and it is, and you're wearing it. Yeah. Uh, uh, when I tell you, Amy, she's a licensed marriage and family therapist as well. I tell you, this panel we have today, let's define what this disorder looks like. Okay. So now, when I, you know, when you th think about the HQPD, mm -hmm. um, what is that to you? Um, I just think about colorism and texturism, okay. uh, which are lovely. Oh, Dr. Oh, G is an expert <laughs> on, but <laughs> so I'm not gonna, you know, say too much because that's her thing. Mm -hmm. But it just reminds me of colorism and texturism, and how we in the Black community sometimes we can be color and texture struck when it comes oh, to wow. our skin color. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm not gonna touch Dr. Duncan right now because I'm just saying. So, look at <laughs> so now, Amy. <laughs> So now, Amy, um, how can we define, like, what would an individual look like? Oh, my goodness. I'm not even sure if it, I think it's more of what comes out of their mouth. Okay. And what they okay. say that sometimes we can pinpoint that person. Okay. Um, a lack of confidence. Because okay. sometimes we can hide what our feelings are about our color and our texture. Yes. And so, I think it's, for me, it's what's coming out of this person's mouth that can um, help me pinpoint, is this an issue for them? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Now, Dr. Donna. Uh, oh, let's oh, uh, make uh, let's make love. <laughs> let's make love. Okay, so I'm going to And I'm going to just sit back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the now, doctor is in the house. No, no, for real. <laughs> so now, this is your specialty. Yes, this is the oh. area that I work with. Um, I see black women, brown women, couples, and oftentimes what we end up talking about is how colorism and texturism have wreaked havoc within the context of their lifestyles and how they want to live and in the sex that they have. Okay, okay. before we go all the way in, 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 in with that area, okay, mm -hmm. let me ask you this. So when it comes to that particular individual, mm -hmm. okay, now how do we get to a point, how long have this this area, you know, this has been an, an area of interest. You know, like, you, you know, when you say, okay, well, you know what, we need to discuss this. This is a profession that I'm going to go into. Oh, wow. This, it's been a long time coming. Okay. So, even within, you know, undergrad at the Morgan State University, <laughs> the premier HBCU across this country, <laughs> I know, Savannah people, <laughs> First 
University by the illustrious Savannah State University, Absolutely. the University by the Anyway, Anywhere. They're here. They're yes. Clear. Let's Crystal. Okay. But what makes them look like Morgan yeah. State? No bears. Um, <laughs> <laughs> while I was there, I studied um, how IQ and um, body image perceptions impacted uh, sexuality or okay. how people thought about sexuality. So this seemed like the natural next step um, in talking about, I was just like, all of these studies are so focused in on white folk. Okay. And you know, it's, it's the automatic. If you don't add African American, when you are doing your research, you're going to get information that might not be what you were looking for. Wow. So um, when I got to grad school, I, I was natural for the first time after having Big, big Chop right at my graduation. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> I was like, right before graduation, I cut off all my hair, and I was like, wait, this graduation cap on this boat is <laughs> not, not what I was, not what I had in mind. <laughs> so, I, I, I got me some braids, but that true transition part of everything, okay. you know, was, uh, there I was at this white university with my natural hair, wondering mm -hmm. how does, how does this impact sexuality? Because okay. I'm in a sexuality program, trying okay. to be a master of sex at the time because a doctor was not on the table. I was not doing that. Okay. Um, and I was just like, well, how does this impact that? And okay. why are we not talking about black sexuality anywhere? Not really in this program. Right. Unless exactly. black folk brought it up, it wasn't, it wasn't at the forefront. Exactly. exactly. And the class that they had, now, and correct me if I'm wrong because we went to the same university, it was an elective. Wow. So you could be elected to take it, but you oh, didn't have wow. to. So I got to teach it um, a couple semesters ago, wow. and I, I'm just like, well, for real. They, even then, you know, like talking about how hair matters within the context of sexuality, I was the one that taught it after I, you know, after I finished my dissertation. Wow. The teacher asked me, can you come teach about this? Teach about this part of the subject. Wow. And then I was like, I need you to teach this class. Because we think of colorism often only in the black community. Colorism is a worldwide phenomenon. Is it now? Oh, worldwide. Yes. The number one uses of bleaching cream in the entire world is Nigeria. Really? Mm hmm Followed wow. by like Togo and India and so it go we're not we didn't even touch the US and that's where we're talking about colorism. We have to talk about colorism, which means that we're talking about white supremacist beauty standards on a worldwide level, not just in one space. That's amazing. That's amazing. So when you're that's talking amazing. about HQPD, I'm thinking internalized colorism and texturism and like Amy said, it's 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 not even just what you say. That's what you do, how you live your life, how exactly. you pick your partners. Do you love the child that came from you because oh, of their, now their you what they look like? Right. Absolutely. Are you resentful of grandma for the things that she said for you? How do yes. you feel about going to the pool? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> because all of these it, it all comes back into play. And people do not understand that again with hair, you, you see a lot. You know, a lot is defined with that. You know, again, you, like you just stated, Amy, um, individuals will speak it. You know, oh, my hair is this. Oh, I see your hair is longer, it's straight. Oh, I like it better than mine. Hair goals. You know. All the time. We're putting oh, somebody else for hair goals. Hashtag, I'm, we exactly. don't like us. We like them. Mm -hmm. no, no, but you learn, you learn how to stop having hair goals real quick. When you start doing those hairstyles, you see other people uh, doing, and you no, no, realize, no. and I'm looking on you. Absolutely. It's like, wow. Wow. It's, it's like, like, I don't like pictures. Pictures. All those little projects? Absolutely. Your project don't look like that. That no. Pinterest project wasn't for you. And neither yeah. was that hairstyle. Right. No. no. And for Amy real. can attest to that. We I did my hairstyle. You remember? I and I I, take it out, and I said, no, we got to start over. No, 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 no. You remember when we did that black twist on my head? I look like Al Sharpton. Oh, cool. can just rock in it's out and that is not so let me just say that you know and so um and again it's thinking that because i'm so light 
then my texture of my hair should be softer, finer, curlier. That is not so. So then it's, that is where then you get the HQPD from. You're walking around with a disorder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what can be done to help these individuals with that, to get them delivered, bring them back to the light? What are the results? Yes. The results are in cocoa butter and hair grease. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I look like everybody can't go to that's therapy, hard. and that's something that I definitely recognize. I look like therapy with me is not cheap. Okay. And we're talking, there's a certain amount of work that has to be done. We're talking about what are the narratives that you've received? Yes. What are the values that they have placed upon your life? How have you been able to live and how would you like to live? Absolutely. That is a whole process Absolutely. to get through that you can also get through with the workbook, Cocoa Butter and Hair Grease. I now, I'm not trying to plug it just to be plugging it. I mean that no. this is the stuff that I took from, yes. from therapy. This is the work that we've done. I've done with clients and watched growth and change. And you basically, but you're going to be responsible for doing it yourself. I mean, I'm not going to beat it and hold your hand. But you go through this process of identifying what were those values that I got? What were, what did, what, what did my mom say? What did my friends say? What did my lovers say? How do I feel about myself on a scale of one to 10? Do I feel cute? Do I feel cute when my hair is straight? Do I feel cuter with a, a weave? Do I feel sexier with a weave? Do I, and am I involved when I'm having sex at all? Like, am I, am I in my body? So yes. you use the workbook to sort of get those past answers. You gotta figure out what's the present narrative too. What are you continuing to say? Because Absolutely. a lot of people keep on talking about some, oh, well, my hair's not manageable. Yes. And, oh, you know, I don't know what to do with this hair. I'm going to go back to the creamy crack. I'm looking like, you're, you're continuing a narrative in your head that your hair is difficult. Exactly. And as long as you believe it to be difficult and unmanageable, you're going to keep acting like it is. Because you're trying to achieve styles that you knew how to do when your hair was straight. And, exactly. and have refused Absolutely. to learn what you got on your head today. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so in, in elementary school is when my peers kept I, um, highlighting that my hair was not permed. And it was just by the words and the ways that it was said, or your hair is so nappy, or you're going with cornrows and braids. How'd you get that in your hair? I remember someone asking me, um, how'd you get those lines in your hair? Mm -hmm. Wow. But we've turned getting your hair straightened into a rites of passage. Mm -hmm. Now now it's uh, indicated that you, you're more grown up. That you're now, for some people, that you're eligible to date. Mm -hmm. And when you do yes. that, so are you are you really grown if you got a nap? So we've turned it into this rite of passage. Now it's about whether or not you're eligible to date. Are you now grown? And if you are not indeed wearing your hair straight, are you grown? Are you still a child? And what are you going to do about it so that you can be seen as grown, so that you can be seen as eligible for dating as well as eligible for jobs? Mm. Wow, wow. Mm. Absolutely amazing. But you know what? You said something that I wanted to address. And you should plug your book. And, and let me just say the reason why is because it's not in the community. We don't, we're not talking about it. There are not books written on that speaks to not only the adults, from, you know, from one age realm, we're talking about from 20s on up, but then also to the preteens, also to, to the children. And so stand up and be very proud. I'm truly proud, you know, that you have the, the, the passion, the heart to see that there is a problem. Because it's, you don't have the children. Well, you see, okay, well, this is a problem that I saw oh, with my child. And it, you know, and so, you know, I've created this because, you know, with my child, I see this, and I want to help others and whatnot. You see this massive in a community that needs to be addressed, and you stood up to represent that. And so for that, I'm so proud of you. You know, it's good because when you say, you know, I don't mean to plug my book. You, I wish you better. I didn't, I didn't you want to be a shameless plug, but what I remember is that going through my own dissertation yes. process, it created this different metamorphosis for me to learn my hair in a completely different way. Because here I am, I had 230 something participants telling me about their hair esteem, sex esteem, self esteem, and then answering all manner of questions about their hair, how it shows up at work, how it shows up in relationship, how it shows up in life. And that, that sparks a self-reflective process. 
You have to look at you. You have to look and see what you're doing and how you're living. And then you end up looking at your people, looking at the people around you. What is it? What is my mixed friends? What ha, what has been there? Their you know their experience Absolutely. with this. Absolutely. What has been um, my white friends? What are their experience with this? Because that came in too. So like when I'm thinking about all of this, like we think of straight long hair as a given that we're supposed to be trying to achieve, which means now we are an anomaly. That we are other, we're different, we're not, we're not worthy, and we have to change. But we have to change that narrative. Because when we go natural, we're still thinking from a straight hair privileged perspective, and we are mad at our hair for not doing that thing we wanted it to do. Absolutely. And we haven't even tried to know what our hair is, how our hair works, what works best for our hair. It's, it's the same as, you know, a child is throwing a tantrum and you just want to spank the child. I'm looking like, well, did you ask the child what's going on? Because the child might be able Absolutely. to tell you something. No, exactly. And that would stop the tantrum. Absolutely. But it's also the same thing we do with ourselves and our emotions. We tramp them down. We're very no. good at it. We feel anxious, we tamp it down, and then we just feel more anxious. And I'm just like, well, what would happen if you just addressed it? Absolutely. Same thing goes with our hair. And what if does. we actually address it? We do. And properly move forward. What does that look like? What kind of freedom can you have? Yes. If you just learn to love your hair, you your hair, it. and live your best life with it. Because everybody's talking about live their best life. I'm just like, <laughs> you're not living your best life Absolutely. when you're seeking someone else's. Absolutely. You know what? Hashtag I okay. Okay. Hair. <laughs> okay. I tell you, uh, because it is so heated here, we must take a break. We're going to come back. Chef B is not here with us today. Our very own chef on the air debate. But we have our team member, Liana, that is just trumping it out. Oh, my God. I'm so excited in what she has prepared. So definitely. For more shows like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified every time the hair debate has a new episode. Now let's get back to the show. Yes, and thank you and welcome back. It's the Hair Debate Show. We have with us Chef Liana. When I tell you, Chef V is not with us today, but we have her partner. Bring it on out, Chef Liana. Ah, that is absolutely tasty. <laughs> Whole grain. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, because I'm like bread. Mm. <laughs> but the guy, the guy, it's <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? I love the fact here that it has the, um, okay, that it has on here um, the tomato. Yes. Okay, which is great for um, your nutrients, you know, your hair, your water content, as we were stating um, one time in a different episode. Um, you know what, when it comes to, you know, our hair, we truly have to be mindful about what we put in our bodies, you know, because healthiness starts from the inside out. So it's truly important in what we put in our body, but when it tastes as good as well, oh, that's, <laughs> that's the treat. That's the treat. Mmm. 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 That's a great treat. Now, how do you prepare that? I mean, like, what's the seasoning? Really? Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, and see, you know, you don't have to have it out of a lot of Everything else. Oh, I love it. I'm here to tell you, this is what we do. This is what we do. I absolutely love it. And you can only find it on the platform of the air debate. I tell you what, definitely comes a tune in what we are going to show you guys stepping into season four. Okay. Um, you see, our set is completely different. You know, and so we are walking into season four with some great things and great ideas and our beautiful ladies, we will be bringing them back. And I tell you, thank you so much, Liana, for being with us. You have, uh, it's, it's a blessing. 
you know, again, the same service, you know, and, and that comes from the same brand that Chef V has created. And so thank you, Chef V. Thank you so much, Amanda Nicholson. Dr. Donna Ariowo. And Amy, and Amy Gaskin, I thank you so much again. My name is Morello Kane. It's the Hair Debate. This is the platform where we debunk, debate, and discover all things hair. <laughs>